Hi everyone, in this video I'm working through question 14 part A of the 2020 extension 2 trial exam from James Roos. So this question has three subparts. We're told that we have complex numbers Z1, Z2 and Z3 and they're given on this Argand diagram. Um, we're told to consider the complex number Z3 such that Z3 minus Z1 squared minus Z3 minus Z1 times Z2 minus Z1 plus Z2 minus Z1 squared is equal to zero. So that's essentially a result that we can rely on. And then um, the first part of our three subparts wants us to find Z3 minus Z1 on Z2 minus Z1 and express that in the form R cos theta plus I sine theta, or in other words, in mod arg form. So this first part one is what I'll focus on in this video. And then I'll work through part two and three in some follow-up videos. So yeah, let's take a look. So I've recreated our diagram. We've got our Z1, Z2, and Z3. And then we've got this result that we can rely on. And fundamentally, our question is to find a new complex number, which will be made up of Z3 minus Z1 divided by Z2 minus Z1 in this mod arg form. So R cos theta plus I sine theta. So I think um, what might be helpful is to just define a few things, create some more Z's um, to, to help simplify our notation and our working out. So I'm going to let Z4 be equal to this numerator here, so Z3 minus Z1. And then I'll let Z5 be equal to the denominator Z2 minus Z1. And then since we want the the ratio between them, I might define Z6 to be to be that. So Z6 will be equal to essentially Z4 on Z5. So that really the question now becomes find Z6 in mod arg form. If we find Z6 in mod arg form, then we found Z3 minus Z1 on Z2 minus Z1. So you don't actually have to do this step, I just think it, it will help in terms of um, simplifying um, our working out. Now I think uh, what we can note, given our definitions, is that if we take this result, we can now rewrite it in terms of our what we've defined. So Z3 minus Z1 for us is Z4, so we can say Z4 squared minus Z4 times Z5 plus Z5 squared, that's equal to zero. And already hopefully you can see that's a bit simpler to, to deal with. Now, um, what would be nice is if we had this in a form that had Z6s in it, because Z6 is what we really care about. And um, if, you, if you look at this, you can kind of see we could probably get there if we divide everything by Z5 squared, because this would then become Z4 squared on Z5 squared, or Z6 squared. This you'd have the Z5 drop off, and you just get Z4 on Z5, and this would just become one. So um, hopefully you can see how that's gonna be helpful. So let's do that. Let's uh, divide both sides by Z5 squared. So I'll just, I won't skip any steps here. I'll just write this out in full so I don't make any mistakes. So we're going to get Z4 squared on Z5 squared minus Z4 times Z5 on Z5 squared plus Z5 squared on Z5 squared equals zero on Z5 squared. So I've divided both sides all by Z5 squared. Now I might have to turn over at this point, but let's work this out. So we'll have Z4 on Z5 all squared. So we can say therefore we've got Z4 on Z5 all squared. And then we've got minus and these will cancel. So we get Z4 on Z5. So minus Z4 on Z5. And then this is simply plus one equals zero, since zero divided by anything will stay zero, so plus one equals zero. Plus one equals zero. 
And from here we can now take the fact that we define Z6 to be Z4 on Z5. And so now we can put in Z6. So we can say therefore Z6 squared minus Z6 plus 1 is equal to 0. And hopefully you can see that's much simpler to deal with than this. And also we've got now a, a simple quadratic. And um, since we're, we're concerned with what is Z6, well we can solve for it using the quadratic formula. So we can say therefore Z6 will be equal to um, negative B squared um, plus or minus square root of, um, sorry, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC on 2A. So we'll go negative B, so negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C on 2a or 2 times 1. So that's our quadratic formula. I think I restated it properly. Um, I've, I've kind of used it so many times it's just kind of burned into my memory. Um, so let's clean this up. So we've got negative negative 1 is positive 1 plus or minus the square root of this will become 1 minus 4 or negative 3 on 2. So if we get this into our complex number form, we'll have um, 1 on 2 plus or minus root 3 on 2i. Um, so really, we've got two versions of z6. We've got z6 being equal to a half plus root 3 on 2i, or we've got z6 being equal to a half minus root 3 on 2i. And I guess the question is, which one of these is relevant for us? And um, I think at this point, um, we, can maybe, we can maybe go back to our diagram and think about um, the arguments of what we're dealing with. So I might just draw a line parallel to the real axis, because the argument of a complex number is the angle it makes with, with essentially the horizontal. Now, um, in terms of what we're dealing with, um, Z4 in our case is um, Z3 minus Z1. So it's really this vector here, if we think about it in vector terms. Um, this is uh, essentially Z4. And um, Z5 is Z2 minus Z1. So this vector here, you could think about as Z5. And maybe I'll just change the colour. In terms of the argument of Z4, that's going to be this angle here, which maybe I'll just call alpha. And the argument of Z5 would be this angle here, which I'll call beta. And the reason that's going to help us is, um, I'll just move my ruler. Um, if we uh, think about, so if we make a note about what the argument of Z6 is, well, if we think about the argument of Z6, that's going to help us work out whether this is our solution or this, because it will tell us are we essentially in the first quadrant, so we move across a half and up, root 3 on 2, or are we in the fourth quadrant, we move across a half and down, root 3 on 2. And essentially, if the argument of Z6 is positive, we know we're going across and up, if the argument of Z6 is negative, we know we're going across and down because that's how you'd get a negative argument. And the arg of Z6 we can write as the arg of Z4 on Z5 because that's what we defined Z6 to be. And so that helps us um, use our rule to say the argument of two complex numbers divided is the difference of their arguments. So the argument of Z4 minus the argument of Z5, and in terms of how I've just defined that, that's going to be alpha minus beta. So alpha minus beta. And I think what we can say is um, we can conclude from that that um, the argument of Z6, if it's alpha minus beta, we know it's going to be greater than zero and it's going to be less than 90 degrees. And the reason we can say that is because we know that, um, we know that um, beta is less than alpha, it's a smaller angle than alpha, 
So we can say beta is less than alpha. Um, and we know both of them are positive angles and both of them are less than 90 degrees. So they're both greater than zero and they're both less than 90 degrees. And um, because of that, we, can, we know that the difference between them would be, again, greater than zero because beta is less than alpha. So when you take beta off alpha, you're still going to have a positive number. But because neither of them are greater than 90, you can't take something less than 90, subtract and end up with something bigger than 90. So you know this is um, kind of, sorry, we know that our argument being alpha minus beta must be between 0 and 90. And so that means we're in quadrant 1 territory because um, uh, the argument that uh, this complex number Z sits makes is going to be a positive angle. So therefore, from there, we can conclude that Z6 must be equal to just this one, a half um, plus root 3 onto I. And so now our challenge becomes, let's get this into mod arg form, and then we're basically done with this question. Now, I might um, turn over, just because it's going to be handy to draw up a little diagram here. So... I think if we kind of think of, if I just draw a very simple um, argand plane, so we've got um, our real and imaginary axis, and if you think of our Z6 now, uh, we, we move across a half, and I'm not going to draw this to scale, but basically we move across a half, and we move up root um, 3 on 2, so that if I was to say connect these with as a triangle, what we'd end up with, if, if this is our point Z6 in the argand plane, we'd have a right angle triangle with um, this base being a length of a half and this height being a length of root three on two. Um, this angle here would be theta in terms of our mod arg form, and this length here would be r, again, in terms of mod arg form. So now we just need to find r and theta using what we know about right angle triangles and we'll have everything we need to answer the question. So uh, maybe we'll start with r because we can say um, for r by Pythagoras, we can say that r squared the hypotenuse would be the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So it would be a half squared plus root 3 on 2 squared. So a half squared would be a quarter. And root 3 on 2 squared would become 3 on 4. So that's going to be uh, a quarter plus 3 quarters is 1. So therefore r is the square root of 1, which is 1. And, and we want the positive square root only because we're getting this positive distance. So we've got our r. Um, now if we think about our theta, um, using right angle triangles, we could say that the tan of our angle theta would be opposite over adjacent. So it'll be root 3 on 2 divided by 1 on 2. And these 2s um, would cancel to give us just root 3. So therefore theta is the inverse tan of root 3, or it's whatever angle when we take the tan of it gets us root 3. Now, if you've memorized your triangles, you'd probably know, but if you haven't, you can just get your calculator and find out the inverse tan of the square root of 3. And that's going to tell you it's 60 degrees. And if you want it um, in radians, you just go 60 on 180, and you'd get pi on 3. And I think in extension 2, the expectation would be that you write it in radians. Um, so therefore, we can conclude that our Z6, which if, um, I'll just move my calculator, if we go right back to um, our definition, Z6 is Z4 and Z5, or in other words, Z3 minus Z1, divided by um, Z5, which is Z2, minus z1, that is what we've just found and that's what we were asked to find. In mod arg form, that is equal to um, just r, which is just our 1, times 
um, the cos of our theta, the cos of pi on 3, plus the i sine of pi on 3. Panic boom! And that's it. That's how we write um, this complex number in mod arg form. So yeah, quite a bit to it actually. I think um, I think uh, maybe maybe the toughest part for this question was knowing where to start. And I think when um, when a question writer gives you something as um, I guess uh, uh, unique, or th I mean, this is a pretty random thing just to give. Chances are, if it's being given to you, it's because you're going to use it. So um, I think that's for me what made me think that's a natural place to start. Now for me, I took the extra step of defining a few things just to make the working a bit, a bit simpler. Um, you, you probably could have got away with not doing that, but I'm sure you could imagine a lot of your working out might have been a lot messier. And it might have been a bit harder actually to notice that in the end you get a quadratic. You, you probably still could have worked it out, but um, here, the way I've approached it, it's really clear we, our, our variable here is z6 and it's a quadratic in that variable. And so we use our quadratic formula. Um, we we kind of had to make a choice and I guess um, maybe some students at this point get a bit caught up on how do you make that choice. And for us, we had to go back to arguments. And so maybe again, not, every, not all students are gonna get there on that, but but I think, I think it's important that you show this rationale to show why you're going to pick this for our Z6. And from there, we use a technique that hope, hopefully you're familiar with to essentially get our mod arg form in terms of thinking of the complex number in the argam plane as always being able to form a right angled triangle, which lets you get the angle it makes with the axis and also its length from the origin. So yeah, hopefully that's all made sense and you found that helpful. Uh, what I'll do is in the next video, I'll look at part two of this question. All right, tick boom.